So Lucy Spragan's new single Animal is out now on Cooking Vinyl. It's taken from her forthcoming album, which is called Choices. Very excited about this. It comes out on the 26th of February. Lucy joins me now. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm uh, I'm I'm joined with my animal right now. I have my dog sitting next to Stephen. me. Stephen. Bless him. He's so adorable. We keeping... spoke about him last time. This this is so crazy because the last time I spoke to you, just proving how long this lockdown's been, it was last May when we spoke, and we were in lockdown then. Oh my god. <laughs> that's just awful. It's just this perpetual cycle of doom, isn't it? But we're—I mean, I feel like we're on the latter half of it now, and that you can kind of see the finish line, ish. I really hope you're right because I keep saying that to myself. It was like six months ago. I was saying to myself, "Yes, we're we're getting through it now. Finally, the light is at the end of the tunnel, and here we are, still oh, yes, there." I, I, I wasn't in that mindset at all. So it changes. It goes from one day to the next. One day the world's ending. So much has happened since we last spoke. Uh, America has a new president, Joe Biden. No more Trump. Thank God. It's a miracle, isn't it? Oh. Really, truly. Did you watch truly. the inaug- inauguration? Oh, I can never say that. Inauguration. <laughs> yes. And it was wonderful. I'm a bit emotional at parts. Yeah. It felt like a... It felt like... Um, but there's been a lot of walking backwards throughout, you know, repeating history and some really terrible moments in history. So to see that, it kind of felt like a break from a lot of misery. Yeah, absolutely. And do you know what I love about it as well is that it was just female. It was girl power, wasn't it? Because we had Jayla, we had Gaga, Katy Perry. It's brilliant. And it's something, you know, it it, it says a lot. It says a lot to have those, that calibre of performer as well. And like everything that they stand for, um, it covers a lot. Yeah. It was it was emotional. We've also got a new COVID vaccine being rolled out as well. Get that given to me, please. <laughs> we want that vaccine. Uh, I saw a tweet that you were posting. You retweeted about that uh, Israeli rabbi that's warned that it could make you gay, that vaccine. <laughs> well, I said... Well, I wonder if it will make me gayer because then I'll have like super a superpower level of gayness. I can't wait. <laughs> and I bring it, it on. Let, let's be gayer. We want that vaccine to make us more gay. <laughs> Have you watched It's a Sin? I was just coming on to that. Have you binge watched it all? All five episodes? Yeah, I watched it. I watched it all the other day and, and my girlfriend was a couple of episodes behind me. And, oh, I just, I just, I don't know. There's another level. Every time I watch or read any piece of art about the history of the LGBTQ community, it just like, it, it brings up this kind of, it's like a raw emotive pride, pride, I mean, the two senses of the word, pride of what collectively the community has gone through. And yeah, it made me really emotional. Oh really my God, emotional. it's so powerful, isn't it? Particularly, well, the third episode and the fifth episode are the standouts for me. Just, I was, it was jaw dropping. It floored me completely. It's a stark reminder of what happened not very long ago at all. And what has changed even in the last decade, let alone, let alone, you know, the last 20, 30 years. It's insane. Yeah, definitely. I think it's better than Queer as Folk. I know that was a while back, but I think it's his best show. I know that's going to be controversial because a lot of people are going to be, how dare you criticise it? I'm not criticising Queer as Folk at all because that was amazing as well. They're two very culturally different kinds of shows because I guess Queer as Folk is just based a little bit later, isn't it? Definitely. I should say congratulations on being sober for 18 months as well. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's changed a lot. (laughs) I just feel, feel, that's why I have positive days because, uh, yeah, I mean, I just feel quite elated sometimes. You must get a lot of people asking you what you do on a bad day. If you've had a bad day where everything goes wrong, like when, was it your tyres? You had a... Uh, a flat tire recently yeah and i live in the middle of nowhere i'm not joking there's fields either side of each side of my house and uh yeah about three miles away from my house i hit a pothole and and the car i was like i'm just waiting for the car to tell me now and the car went beep 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 you've <laughs> got no air in the tire thank god you're flat okay tire. oh well i mean on those days I actually just like take the, it's, it's not those days that are bad because when you get a flat tire, you're like, I feel a bit annoyed because, and here's the flat tire. There's the reason it's the days when you just wake up feeling bad. Yeah, They're hard because you can't actually work out why. So being sober is a lot of like sitting with your emotions and 
trying to work out why <laughs> so how do you cope with that what what do you what's your kind of go-to do you go i, I guess because you're eating healthy food now healthier food and you're working out do you turn to exercise are, are mean, you not listen i eat healthy <laughs> food but i mean not just healthy food i, I eat whatever food i want truly but you burn um, it off though that's that's the trick isn't it you burn off the food if you eat like say a box of donuts or something I mean, I'm not I, suggesting you would, but that's the thing in life that I'm trying to work on is moderation because I realise the problems that I have are with moderation. So I, I have to really, you know, I have to not eat six donuts. I can have one donut and enjoy that. But before I'd be like, I'm having beers and I'm having all the beers and then I'm having all the donuts. <laughs> I got given a box of six donuts recently because I was having a bit of a down day and my friend Raj, really good friend of mine, he sent me a box of Crosstown donuts and I shared, I didn't eat them all, I shared them with my other half so we had three each in one day which is pretty bad for me, that, that doesn't sound that much but actually it is quite a lot isn't it, three donuts, that's a lot of calories. It, it really it really doesn't matter um, and if it made you feel better then <laughs> that's fine and I, and that, that's that's the thing about it it's like at the moment you've got to just really kind of do whatever works for you yeah i felt better until the next day when i felt really fat and lethargic yeah oh, well <laughs> you know it, i mean it, it wears off it goes <laughs> So we should talk about your new album, which comes out on the 26th of February. I could talk about Donuts all day, but the new album is called Choices. How excited are you? You're literally weeks away from when this comes out. I'm ridiculously excited, and I, I, I just can't wait for people to hear it. I've had it for so long. It got pushed back once already, so, you know, I just... I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I feel like I've been sitting on it for so long. I've heard it. It's great. Ah, did you listen to it? Did you get a yeah. link? It's really good. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm not just saying that. It's, is it 13 tracks, isn't it? It starts yes. with Flowers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which is the the, the song, I've got to say, that made me feel a bit slinky. It was like, yeah, because I'm useless at dancing, but yeah. I was... It is a bit slinky. I'm bad at dancing as well, but I'll give it a go. For the first time in my life, last year, I was like newly single and I sort of, I'd started developing this different lifestyle and trying to look after myself a bit more. And I just... I felt sexy for the first time in my life, and it was a bit. It was funny because like I'm, ne I've never felt that way. I've just never been like that. So yeah, I mean, it was different. And Roots is really interesting as well because obviously we have to stay where we are in lockdown, and this is about material possessions and how, really, at the end of the day, they're not that important because they don't always make you a happy person. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the biggest takeaway from this. I'm selling my house. Um, I'm going to move a lot closer to my sister and um, my friends. And just really, you know, I've been shedding things that 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 I don't need. So in that sense, has it, has it made you more reflective, uh, especially writing and recording this in lockdown as well? Has it been a different experience for you compared to how you've written and recorded music before? Life is totally different. I mean, I look at things in a completely different way. Even, even when it comes to, yeah, you know, I just used to, I used to really want what was on the other side all the time. The grass was always greener, yeah. and now it's, it's. I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like the grass is green here, and all you actually really have to do is spend some time looking at the grass, and you realise it's green. But you know, if, if you're not looking at it, if you're looking elsewhere, you'll never see the colour. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And there's a song called Run to the Hills, which was written when your relationship was falling apart as well. So I would imagine that kind of helped you through the process as well. It made you... Uh, does it feel painful, though, when you revisit that song, when you listen to it now? Does it feel like it was a painful time for you? Or do you feel kind of stronger? Uh, yeah, I feel much stronger. Um, I guess I was, there was just a lot of confusion. You can hear that in the song. Um, but the song kind of... The whole album has a... A, t a timeline a sort of progression of like you know I was feeling this way and then I was feeling this way and then it was like you know and now I'm back yeah and towards the end of the album you can hear like I'm back actually it's so good because it's got this kind of melancholic tinge to it but it still sounds really uplifting it sounds like quite empowering when you listen to it it sounds like you've got a lot of energy there but it does it does have that sadness in it so it's not like you're kind of singing a song that sentimentally is sad but it doesn't sound completely sad it's it's got that balance i think it sounds great 
I think that's what's what I wanted to put in it. I didn't want to make a sad record because I'm not sad. Um, I, and you know, I made choices. I made the decisions. And like th- songs like Heartbreak Sweets, they're about breaking my own heart. It's yeah. not about somebody breaking my heart. I used to have this great, great skill of getting a grenade and dropping it into my own life and turning around and running away. And that's what I've got rid of. And that's towards the end of the album. It's like you know, I've I've learned. Let's start again. Is that the song where you're singing about staying in the Holiday Inn and you're watching a movie? Yeah. So what was that film? I'm curious. I can't remember, but it was like a proper like rom-com. I think I might have had Hugh Grant in it. And I was just like, I feel a bit sad. Um, but that was one of the first times being sober that I was like, what the hell is this feeling? Um, and it was it was sadness. So what are the films that make you sad? What, what was the last thing you cried at, apart from It's a Sin? I'm guessing it was I that. Cried. It was, yeah, I cry at, like, a lot of things. I cry at adverts a lot. The, you know, the um, actually, there's an advert in between It's a Sin with the, the, the massive black horses running. What's the advert? Is it oh, Lloyd's? T- yeah, Lloyd's, isn't it? Yeah, Lloyd's Bank, I think. I the horses running across the beach. See, I, I'm cry. totally with you on that. Yeah, I get, I, I mean, I it's so easy for me to, to burst into tears when I'm watching stuff on TV. If it's done well, if the acting's really good. yeah. I love I love watching your uh, Twitter timeline unfolding as well because you were playing a video game recently. Was it The Last of Us? Yeah. <laughs> and you were talking about kids that were using the phrase "suck your mum." I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> you not? I used to foster kids, so I have heard it before, like from teenagers. But <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's not a compliment, like. No, <laughs> I mean I can imagine what it means, but does it really mean that? <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> Kids, they come out with stuff worse than adults sometimes, I think. It's less spiteful. It's more just, you know, yeah, they have some they have some good they have some good ones, especially online gaming, yeah. <laughs> so what was Lucy Spragan like as a as a child? Oh, awful. Awful. Really? Years ago I emailed my school and said, just in case there's any teachers that like taught me, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same just recently. I I used to take the piss out of one teacher at sixth form though. That wasn't even at school. <laughs> no, I was yeah, I got thrown out of school quite a lot. I was I was qu- quite terrible. See, I wouldn't I would never have said that. <laughs> oh, I was. I was. Um but I was always quite funny with it. Never like horrible to to people i was just always always trying to make people laugh like, uh, so that, the yeah so that's laugh. different i can imagine that i can imagine you're a bit mischievous but never cruel yeah. though not cruel no, no just um, just a bit bit of a bit of a knob <laughs> but aren't we all though sometimes yeah. <laughs> i still am i have yeah. not been able to get it just yet <laughs> i wasn't saying yes about you by the way i was saying it's about me that's, that, that's how i can behave Don't sometimes <laughs> Listen, uh, sadly, time is up because you've got so many interviews. Are you doing loads at the moment? You must be because the album's obviously yeah. out next next month. Yeah, I mean, it's been quite it's been quite consistent, so that's that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I got my boobs, and everyone wants to talk to me. I should have done it before. <laughs> it's like Toy Wilcox. I don't know if you've seen her YouTube. She does YouTube videos on, at the weekend with her husband Robert Fripp, the musician guitarist, and she uh, was wearing like it was like a normal top, I think, but she didn't have, didn't have a bra on underneath, and all of a sudden she's she's had three million, four million views. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you very much for having me. Oh. And um, let's catch up again soon. Like, hopefully not another pandemic away. I know. Yeah, hopefully by the time the album's out, it'll be a bit brighter. We'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's so good to see you, Lucy. Thanks so much for chatting to me. And good luck with the album. Bye. See you soon.